I'm from the Alliance for Independence, uh, which is a, a new force in Scottish politics. Uh, we've been set up this year, and the purpose is to bring together all the um, the other pro-independence parties that are not the SNP. Well, there's a, quite a few minor um, parties in Scotland that support independence. Uh, we wanted to bring them together along with um, independents like myself. I've been independent for you know 37 years, um, but pro-independence independence. If that, you know, if you pardon the um, confusion with the word there. Um, so we wanted to bring everybody else, basically, other than the SNP who supported independence together under one uh, sort of umbrella so that they can work together to stand in the lists in the Scottish uh, Parliament. Now, the, the, the list section, we, what we've got, again, I'll try and be brief with this, but what we've got is known as an amended de Haunt system, um, or also known as an additional member system. So we have 73 constituencies where it's basically the same first-past-the-post rules that we've always had uh, with Westminster. But then there's another another, um, another 56 seats that are elected by this Don method. And with that, uh, the way that they count those is they have, they have um, seven members in each of the eight regions to be elected. So you finish counting the constituencies first, and then you start on the, the regional vote. And say the SNP, um, they've been the biggest party for quite a while now. They've probably won most of the constituencies. Yeah. So what happens is their vote in the list, the regional list section, is divided by the number of constituencies they won plus one. The plus one is a little bit confusing. It's just there for mathematical reasons because you can't divide by zero. Um, so to make it work, you have to add one each time you do it. Um, and then they will decide the first regional position and they'll add that to whatever party's told wins that seat and then they do it again. So uh, really the more the more constituency seats you win, the harder it gets to win a seat in the list. And for that reason, when I was first looking at this uh, six years ago, 2014, when I, I came back to Scotland for the India, I was looking at this system and I thought, well, isn't it obvious how you would contest that system. And nobody else seemed to think so at that time, but you know, it seemed obvious to me that you needed a different entity in the list section to the one that you had in the, in the constituency section. So I started calling for it back then, a, a, an alliance of, of other yes forces. Um, took a while for the idea to catch on, but you know, over those six years, we've been joined by more and more people as they've worked out that this is actually a, a valid way of approaching it um, so that now we, we, we formed in um, February we, we had a big meeting in Glasgow and a whole bunch of activists from all over the country came together and decided to form this alliance and we uh, we had a steering group elected which I'm one of the members of uh, to actually do the setting up of it they, you know do the, the um, administrative bureaucratic work of setting up an organization. Now, we've been working hard at that ever since. Uh, we're formally constituted. We passed the constitution quite a number of months ago now. Um, and we submitted our registration to the Electoral Commission. Uh, and that was uh, maybe two and a half months back we did that. So what's happened since then is uh, the Electoral Commission got back to us about a month ago, and they uh, rejected our initial application. Yeah. And the grounds on which they rejected it were a number of you know, fairly minor technical mm -hmm. issues, uh, which we were able to resolve relatively easily by making uh, small changes to our constitution, basically to the wording of the constitution. Nothing that would present any serious problems. The main one that they objected to, though, was the name itself. Now, we, are, we had chosen Alliance for Independence, also known as AFI or AFI, um, because we felt that was a, an absolutely accurate description of what we were. 
our independence is our sole purpose. We're an electoral alliance um, with with one policy, and that's to to do whatever we can to obtain independence. Um, so you know, we, it's it's kind of we it's exactly what we do exactly what it says on the tin. You know, that's that's what we are. That's our raison d'être, and we submitted that without any real thought that you know that, that would cause a problem. However, they came back with a ruling uh, that really to us didn't make a whole lot of sense. And they, they said, uh, if I remember their wording correctly, they said um, that the voters might be misled into thinking that we represented some or all pro-independence parties, uh, which is exactly what we do. <laughs> So they would be misled into thinking we are what we are. Now, the, it was quite a confusing ruling. Uh, to me, it was quite illogical, just did not make any sense. So we had a subsequent follow-up meeting with them uh, to try and iron out some of this stuff. And they were completely unable to satisfactorily justify the ruling that they'd made or to even explain it properly. Um, it, seemed, it seemed that they were simply going to say, no, tough, you know, that's what we said and that's, that's it, we're not, when it, it doesn't have to make sense, was basically their position. Um, so what we've had, been obliged to do is to change the name. We wanted to keep the acronym of AFI, so uh, we've actually changed the name now to Action for Independence, which we feel is, is quite a, a positive um, kind of term without pinning us down to actually being anything in particular. Um, we're, we're still going to operate as an alliance, that's not changed, but there's nothing changing about the concept, the strategy, or how we will actually operate. Um, they didn't raise objections to those things, however, um, we, we, we needed another name, so we thought about it for a while, we, we discussed it, and we came up with one that uh, we feel they cannot object to. So that's where we're at at the moment. So you'll, you'll find if anyone's looking for us, don't look for Alliance for Independence anymore, look for Action for Independence. There are a couple of things that people um, say basically against um, uh, the Les Faux vote parties or whatever you want to call them. Uh, is that, like, for instance, that we, were, we were, uh, are against the SMP. We are not. The no. thing is, I am an SMP member. I'm a paying uh, members ever since the uh, after, right after the independence referendum. But I support yeah. this idea. Uh, but also, they, they they keep saying, well, in 2011, we got a majority vote with SMP one and two. The only problem was then uh, at that point they didn't get the SMP didn't get as much votes in the constituency vote that they are doing now. And therein lies the problem. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, uh, yeah, go ahead. Can, yeah, if I, if I could just address that one, because that is a question that we get all the time. Yeah. Um, now, uh, it, it would seem, and I'm, I'm not claiming to be a statistical expert, although I have studied stats, um, it would seem that what happened was that in 2011, they hit a statistical sweet spot. You know, where they got just enough in the constituencies um, to get a decent number of seats, way short of a majority, um, but still um, not, you know, they, they were still able to pick up mm. uh, numerous seats in the, I think they got 16 in the lists at that time. And that was able to take them to an overall majority. The system was actually designed not to produce exactly. overall majority. Exactly. That's the point they, of basically, that. they basically beat the system. At 2011. Yeah, yeah. by getting exactly the right amount. Exactly. Less exactly. than that, it wouldn't work. You get more than that, it yeah. doesn't work. I, I, I want to give you some some numbers. Um, hmm. I've, I've mentioned them before, but uh, this just just a small amount of um, uh, numbers uh, about the list voting. Uh, tw this is about the um, the 2016 um, elections. Yeah. And this, these are votes in the uh, in the uh, in the list uh, of voting. Central Scotland, one hundred and twenty-nine thousand and eighty-two uh, mm. votes. Glasgow, one hundred and eleven thousand one hundred and one votes. 
Lothian, 118,546 votes. Mid, Scotland and Fife, 120,128 votes. North yeah. uh, Eastern Scotland, 137,086 votes. West Scotland, 135,827 uh, votes. In total, 751,770 votes in the mm. uh, list vote. How much uh, s and seats did that get? None. Yeah. Zero. None. Yep. And um, that's what we're talking about. That yeah. is what we're talking about, guys. Uh, uh, we're not. What we're not. Saying? What were the SNP saying? Because for me, it makes they keep sense. saying they keep basically keep saying to maximize the 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 SNP seats is to SNP one and two. Now I'm not. I'm not. I'm not failing the SNP. I mean, I am a proud member of the SNP. Have been for quite a while now, but. If you just look at how the Dehan system, or in this in this case, the amended, amended uh, the Hunt system works, um, it is designed for for any party not to have an overall majority. Mm. Yes, they did get that in 2011, but that's because they, like Derek said, they just got the right amount of uh, votes in the in the constituency votes, they, just the right amount, and that's why they got the overall majority. Yeah. Yes. Now, if you get once you get to about forty percent, and this is interesting, once the party gets to about forty percent, if um, the other parties are low enough, they start going as they go from forty towards fifty, they actually go backwards in numbers of seats that they get. That's yeah. that's just because of the vagaries of the system. It's meant to be a proportional system. They claim that it's a proportional system, but it's not. It's a fudge that produces a result. Most of the time, but not every time, that's not dissimilar to a proportional result. You know that, that there's a, a there's a, an expression. I'm a big Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy fan. There's an, <laughs> an expression in there about a hot, a warm brown liquid, almost but not quite entirely unlike tea. And and this is basically a system that's almost but not quite entirely unlike a proportional system, but it, it produces a similar result most yeah. of the time but not always and and so it has these uh these perverse outcomes within it where between 40 and 50 percent you're actually going backwards in your representation and one of the main reasons why they they um they did less well mm. in 2016 was that the tory vote went up quite a lot in the list section um and a lot of that seems to have been due to the collapse of the labor vote and to unionists voting tactically for the Tories. So right. Labour and Lib Dem voters going, oh, you know, we're not going to do so well here. We might just vote for the Tories to keep the SNP out kind of thing. It didn't really work because there was a, a, another party, a pro-ND list party, and it was the Greens. Hmm. They picked up half a dozen seats. And if you add that to the SNP's total, it's a working majority. Yeah. Now, the Greens don't support the SNP on all policies, but they do give them confidence and supply. And, you know, they, they've declared for a long time now that they'll always support a referendum. Now, what we're looking to do is to go in there and, and, and do something similar, but pick up votes that the Greens um, could, never, could never get. Now, some of that will come from... SNP voters giving us their second votes. Some of it will come from other parties. There are quite a lot of um, there are quite a lot of independent supporters. Weirdly enough, in the so-called unionist parties, the Labour Party in particular has always had between maybe thirty and forty percent of their voters are actually pro-independence, and you know we'll be we'll be targeting them as well. There's even a group, uh, Tories or uh, um, you, no, not Tories. Um... Yeah, sorry for Indy. Somebody sent me a thing to the Twitter page just the other day. Yeah. They do exist. There's, conservatives, conservatives for oh. independence. Mm, right. It's it's. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> but look, here's the thing. I, I remember. I welcome them. them. They, they had the SNP had a defector from the Tories back in oh, I would have been late seventies, early eighties. This is just yeah. dredged up from the the back of my memory somewhere. Um, and he defected from the Tories to the SNP, and when they asked him why, he said, if I'm going to support a nationalist party, it might as well be a nationalist party from one country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a valid point of view. You can see, you can see. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
it, for me, if I, you know, if I if I did live in Scotland, I I'd vote the SNP and I'd vote for you guys with my second vote. If it, this makes well, that, that's what we are asking for. And look, an awful lot of our supporters are actually in the SNP or former SNP. Um, mm. And and yeah, we are we are looking at maximising uh, the the effectiveness of the pro indie vote, mm. and that's why we we, we our uh, slogan is Max Yes. Yeah. Um, by calling for, for everyone to support the SNP in the constituency sections mm. and then give us their second vote in the list section. And that way uh, we can actually produce a super majority. You know, yeah. rather than have two or three seat majorities, we could have a pro indie majority that's maybe 20 or 30. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, for us, it's a much better way to go and it will produce a much more clear cut outcome and it will push those unionist parties, and particularly the Tories who we really can't stand in this country, um, out to the margins of yeah. politics. And there's a number of things that they get from being the second largest party. They got about 25% of the vote last time. And that's, you know, that, obviously it's about half of what the SNP are getting. But that was their high point. They hadn't got well, anything like that in well, years. That, to be fair, mm -hmm. oh, um, almost ha oh, about half of that or maybe even more than half came from the list vote yeah well yeah the majority of of their M msps came from the list the same is true of labor um they're, they're getting it particularly labor i think labor have only got like one or two actual constituencies um the tories have only got a handful and most of their msps come off the list and the reason is because when you're voting for the snp just what you just pointed out, Raymond, which is that um, the, the SNP are essentially wasting 750,000 votes mm. that, that are going to elect no one uh, and unionists are filling those places. Yeah. So the, the obvious solution to that, you know, as far as I could see, was to have a second pro-independence uh, grouping to fight in the lists only and, and pick up those... Uh, pick up those seats from the unionists. And we believe that if we can get this message across and people truly understand what it is we're trying to do, we might potentially become the second largest grouping. Hmm. Um, and therefore we would be the official opposition right. instead of the Tories, right? So yeah. Yeah. now when you are the official opposition by being the second largest group, um, there's a number of advantages to that. Quite a few of them are financial, um, hmm. but I think more important than the financial ones in terms of staff and all that sort of thing um, is the, 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 that you are mainstream. If you're the opposition, then you're part of the mainstream political discussion. Right? So they're pulling the Tories in. Every time you get a, something happens, you know, you'll get a comment from the government. It would be usually Nicola Sturgeon or one of her senior ministers. And then you go to the opposition for their comment. So it would be the Tories. Now, that makes it seem as though they're kind of on an equal footing and that um, the unionism is just as mainstream as uh, support for independence. If we were able to push them out of the way, then they come to us for the first comment and you would have a government and an opposition that are both pro-independence. That makes us more mainstream and it pushes unionism to the fringe. And and that's, that's the ultimate aim that we have. And I call that not tactical voting, as some people would say, but strategic voting, because that's what we're looking to do. We're looking to change the nature of the debate in this country. We're looking for unionism to no longer be a mainstream force exactly. in Scottish politics. Exactly.